for most of the students who are attending the PAC program, they come to ACC, they're also taking classes at UT and finally transfer over UT. is a really, really amazing place, uh, ACC, and we're blessed because most of our money comes from the taxpayers, right? So if you own a home in our taxing district, you pay to support this, this wonderful place, right? And so this place, which you're in, Accelerator, which is the largest learning environment, technical learning environment in the world, or our president would say the galaxy. So when we walk around, if you have not been to UT football stadium, this is as long as the football field. Wow. Now, it is crazy, insane, over 600 plus computers are a mix of fields and a mix of apples. Which really makes it interesting because these actually are not pure computers. These are virtual desktops. Yeah, it makes it cheaper, it's easier instead of having all in ones. If I need to change something in all 600 computers, I just need to go to a server, boom, 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 and it uploads to all of the computers. Right? It makes it much easier to control. Um, it's better for set, uh, security and safety purposes. So it's a it's fantastic, amazing place. So it's about 41,000 square feet that you are in. This used to be an old mall, shopping mall, right? The Highland Shopping Mall. And I believe this was the lady shoe department <laughs> that we are sitting in right now. <laughs> and so if you think about it, if you look at the construction back in the, the 60s, you know, they built this almost like a bunker. That's why you see the concrete is so thick and hard. So if we had a nuclear bomb, most of the stuff would still be here. <laughs> we wouldn't, but the structure would still be here, right? And so it's really interesting to see the concrete. Of course, the concrete sucks because, man, cell phone, right? But it's still pretty cool if you think about the fashion aspect of technology, architecture, right? It's, it gives you this, this cool kind of concrete industrial kind of look, right? So it keeps in the in the system in the play. The pods are, yeah, very, very expensive pods. <laughs> $8,000 a piece. Wow. Yes. And the crazy thing is they are bullet resistant, <gasps> not bulletproof. What's the difference between resistance versus proof? <laughs> That's right. So resistant, bullet one, Bullet two, bullet three, bullet four, <laughs> get out of here, right? <laughs> so it's interesting, and I don't know why, but they, they, they created in that, that format, um, and this was before we even got to campus carry, because now you know, you're allowed to carry on campus. But at least we created this for the purpose, if there is need, you can hide under the, the location. Would that help? <laughs> <laughs> You know, especially if I have an AKA, you might be in trouble. But at least we <laughs> put something here for security and support. One of the also cool things that you'll see here at the pods is one of the things we really pride ourselves here is, is customer service and support. And so if you're sitting at the pod and if you need some help, my staff is always looking around. All you have to do is pick the cup. Wow. Oh. Now, think about this, if you ever get a point in terms of innovation and creation, so imagine, again, this is $8,000. And they said, oh, you would like to have light switches on here. Someone needs some help, click the switch, boom. They said, okay, perfect, give me $4,000 more <laughs> for each pod. So imagine 4,000 or this. Still very innovative and very cheap, so everybody was very happy. <laughs> that we went with the cops instead of another additional 4,000 per pot, right? So, my quick presentation for you. Is that you are, the space is amazing, the building is amazing, the, the size of it is amazing, but you're actually sitting in, right now, the largest classroom in the world. This is a classroom. Our main function here is innovative instruction and teaching. 
Right now we're slow. This is the last week of classes. Next week of finals, we're kind of done. Matter of fact, December 11th is our last day of classes here. So it's a little bit slow. Normally we would be, before the pandemic, every area had classes. You're right now actually sitting in the GIS and ARC info area. Over here would be traditional geography, English classes. Then down there you would have math classes, you would have drama class, uh, dance class. Yes, because anything you could do on computers, you could do it in here, right? And so when you think about, when we talk about the future of education, this is really, really impactful the way we design this place. And the concept of competing with a classroom, a traditional classroom, can't compete with what we do here in this space, right? And so it's really, really most collaborative. Um, we may have, I may have uh, 20 staff that works in here, but we probably have over 100. So about 80 staff don't report to me. So it's a serious collaboration. Geography department, uh, you're walking, you'll see all the SA in here right now, financial aid, admissions, um, career corner. You'll see so many different departments working in this space. It's about pure collaboration. People talk about it, but it's really hard to do until you remove the walls, right? So one of the coolest things you would ever know is a student can be sitting right there and have an issue about tutoring. Well, I can have a tutor come sit right next to them. They have an issue about paying their school. I can have a financial aid counselor come sit right next to them. Anything you need, I can bring that person right to you. So you never have to. How interesting could I be? It's as simple as that, right? Here's our approaches. And again, I, I, I emphasize it because again, you just don't see this format anywhere in the world, this way of teaching. You just don't have this design. Where now, a professor, when they write their curriculum to their chair, they say, oh, what are you doing? Oh, easily. I'm going to do research based. So my geography professor says, hey, OK, who's the father of geological time? I don't know. Well, you have the internet. Go and re research it. So immediately, everybody started to the Twitter piggly and da 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 da, researching who's the father. So imagine, instead of sitting, I love teaching. And you see all of me as a teacher. It's more engaging. Background from me walking. I love talking. I'm moving my hands. It's not sitting there boring. So we have so many now faculty decided, oh, this actually is more formal because I normally teach standing up. I should do this format. Right? And so now you have students. Now you even have professors who are teaching like this. You have the students there, and you could have the students at the pot. So now we have a high flex set up. So you can do high flex, you can do hybrid, or pre online. So again, the flexibility of the space again, makes it so unique and different. It's a good thing I have the boss, I can have one people do the work. So that is it. Any quick questions and we'll take a walk around and Okay, so um I'm just wondering, how many people are using that cups every day? Because like you already put it there since the beginning of the presentation and nobody come. And also uh <laughs> which 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 the cups. Oh, <laughs> because, and, and yeah. no, because they know I'm doing the okay. presentation. Okay, and, um, yes. <laughs> because, because you have a really advanced technology, like one surface, and you distribute it into, the, into the, all the computers, right? Mm -hmm. I understand that. So, like, we still use the cups when you can create a system in the, in the, in the, in the, in the computer. Because the, the, the system that you're talking about would cost me 4000 Now, if you went to my other accelerators, I have a system, a light switch because the technology evolved when we were building this and this, it was cheaper. But everybody likes using the cups now. And it's, Is people and still it's using the cup? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, you, you talk about the, that class, right? Right mm -hmm. there. And if you have the, have the space, and currently there is a lot of empty space, we are still using that class. Uh, because professors. 
not every professor wants to come and teach in an open space environment. Yeah. So in 19, uh, 1970, remember when Sputnik went up in space mm -hmm. and America went crazy? Oh, my God. And one of the things they tried to do was an open space environment yeah. in the elementaries, uh, in the junior highs. It didn't work. Mm. And so someone went out and did the research. Why it didn't work? The first thing is the faculty, first thing they said was, oh, my God, increase visibility means increase scrutiny. Yeah. So we're going to walk and we're going to walk past this class. There's a professor there working and he knows all 22 of you can see him teach. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay. Uh -uh. You didn't put me out there like that. Scary. Yes, I've had people cry <laughs> because we put their class right there, mm -hmm. right? I'm the executive dean. Oh my God, the dean. Our, our chancellor can walk through. Right now, our vice chancellor is working out of the room. So as a faculty, you're scared as hell. Some love it because that's who they are. They're just out that outgoing. Another's man, this is a smart TV. <laughs> I play with this thing all the time. It's yeah. Technology. But do you know how many faculty? This yeah. is intimidating. Yeah. Right? And what's interesting, if I'm teaching on it, well, if something goes wrong, oh my God, what's wrong? It's not working. So I'd rather just have that simple PowerPoint in my laptop. Now, of course, if you come in, my staff is here for you. So we've taken that out. Matter of fact, if you come in and say, hey, Curtis, I need a smart board, I need a lecture, I need tables, before you walk in, my team sets it up for you. And then they'll break it down. So I can have a staff always with you to take away that, that fright. And how much cost for that one? For that one. This? That one. Ah, yeah. Probably about 200 200. Yeah. And where do you make this? Do you make this in this America? This is actually custom made from a company uh, in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, I see. Thank you. Hi, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Can I do that? <laughs> yeah, this one. Um, so where do you start? And you said that you can do all of it in one class. How is it? Because I, I'm, I'm learning on personalized <laughs> curriculum right now. I'm doing the research on that. So yeah, I want to ask you about how you right, do so that. Right, so let's go back to the, the art example. Yeah. Right, and so that professor came in, he says, oh, okay, on this day, I'm going to talk about, I have a picture, mm -hmm. and we're gonna talk about the shadowing of that picture. We're gonna talk about lines and the color. So there's three thematic topics that we're going to focus on for that day, right? And so normally he would just have his PowerPoint. We're like, don't do that, only lecture your definition of what you want people to pull out of what is a line, what is a color, what is the shape. Then your first is research base. So research base would be, okay, everything I just told you, I want you to go and just automatically just go online and research. At this moment, you guys got five minutes to do so and pull up this picture and then we're going to discuss that. The students are doing that. You should have that discussion. Next, let's do resource base. Resources base is important because if I am an art professor, I want you to be able to go to different art museums. If I'm a geography professor, I want you to go to different associations of that particular subject, right? We have them all exist, but it's funny how a lot of times we teach, we don't push students in that direction yeah. to access that resource, right? And so now you got the team, so automatically I've already hit these just by doing that research. If I just up here lecture, 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 I'll never get to a point where I get you to do something. Because normally I lecture, we're finished, and then I go, go research on your own. Mm. Mm. How do I do it during class? And then one of the most important elements of this that I didn't bring up is called SEED. It's something I designed for the teaching here. It's called student engagement during instruction, especially for black males and Hispanic males. Mm. How do I connect with you as a professor? I could be this old white professor up here, and you know, here you go, you already don't like me, because you know, you think, you already have all these preconceived notions about me. One of the things I tell professors you could do is once they're doing some research, hey, how's your mom? Mm -hmm. Then walk away, hey, how's your, it's, engagement. yes, and it's funny because I've asked about your family just briefly, and the males will come back and be like, Curtis, man, he asked about mom. 
it's by my mom. What's going on? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe he's just scared. And of course, we, we men, we got this macho thing. <laughs> now he, he likes me. My partner, my guy, boom, you know. <laughs> so I need to come to class a little bit more. I need to <laughs> focus a little bit more because, you know, it's funny. We, we started devaluing that. So that engagement is hard again to do that in a regular classroom. And so you have to think, and, and this is another reason why. You say, oh, they won't come in here because, you know how easy it is to just keep my 75 slides? This is difficult because I'm asking the faculty to first, they have to go to the four different museums to research a picture there. That means I'm at home researching when I already got my PowerPoint. Right? Oh, when do I want to say and then engage? When do I, what time do I want to? That's a lot of additional work. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of things. As a teacher, it's, you know, yes. taking a lot of time. So how do you encourage those faculties to do that? You know, like changing it, for 75 slides to... It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like what difficult. support you offer also? Yeah. It's, 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 it's been, so we do have instructional designers that okay. sit. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it's been on my shoulders a lot because I'm an old professor. So mm -hmm. I just teach geography at three different universities. And what I noticed, faculty don't accept help unless it's from another faculty. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> right, yes. You yeah. know, and so sometimes I would send them to the instructional designer, and then they would come back and say, okay, Curtis. And then I'd be sitting there with them saying, no, let's do this, do this, bring this in, the team teach at this point. Because we got, now we have to list out that hour mm. at what point and how long you're lecturing. The right? lesson plan. Right. And the difficult for them is, the talking, because this is to be up here. Once you get used, man, I got all the eyes on me. Hello, yeah. I'm important. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> and some faculty love to lecture because all eyes on me. That's why we have these huge lecture halls. And like, hey, I'm important. <laughs> what we're trying to do is flip that, and you guys are the important one, mm -hmm. and let you guys do the work. Why should I sit up here and talk all the time? Some is hard. Another scary thing is the research. So my geography professor, that first question, who's the father of geological time? Remember, I, you have access to everything on that. So he got in a disagreement because one student researched and pulled from Harvard. The Harvard geography professor made a comment that was opposite to his comment. And the student says, well, you're just a community college professor. He's Harvard. Right? Because now I have opened up the world to my yeah, classroom. Yeah. Are you strong enough to have that conversation? Yeah. One of the cool things, though, he had, he realized the students do research, and he had these 10 questions. And one of the students came back and said, this question is wrong. I found this answer. This professor said, you know what? You're right. Because my answer is three years old. This answer was created this year. Right? And so information, research is going on. How do you take that incorporated if I'm just off a, a book? Wow, thank you. Uh, I have a question following up with both questions. So, probably like, first of all, I think teaching is like very holistic and what you're doing here is very beautiful and powerful because you are engaged with like a lot of like stakeholders being the professors, the faculty, the students basically. Um, and you mentioned that as well, like how difficult that is. So I want to know, firstly, um, do, you get, do you have like a training program for teachers? Because I think, yeah, what you mentioned about it's like a comfort zone, basically. That's think, correct, yeah. yes. So I, I realized um, ever since that one professor cried on me, because uh, <laughs> it's funny, uh, the chair departments would schedule a class to the campus manager who would look for classrooms. The classrooms were packed. And so they said, Curtis, we need to put that professor in the accelerator. So six pods is one class, right? So it's 24 students. So they put her there. And when she walked in, she says, well, my classroom. I said, oh, no, these pods is your classroom. So she started. <laughs> and then afterwards, she ran out, ran upstairs, and begged them to find a classroom. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to work with her. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, we'll find a classroom for her. But then they found another person to put that person in. And they told me, you need to do something. So immediately, I designed a website called Teach and Engage in the Accelerator. 
and they'll break down everything and then if they want they can set an appointment with me and we will go through the whole process and one important process is the of what I call debunking the myths of teaching the first one is oh my god to teach students can't study in here because they will be distracted yeah right yeah, because oh my they're gonna be looking at this girl over here Ooh, she's cute mm -hmm. right right or they just can be a phone but it's funny because we could look at that and this guy right here in the black hat <laughs> he could be on his phone the teacher would never even know right <laughs> at least you can be more engaging here right and then what's interesting as I am presenting to you he never looked up he has his earphone on she looked up once no one's paying attention so I have to debunk them I have to bring them in and walk them through to see that students are not caring what you're doing. The second myth was, oh, we're replacing the teacher with technology. Yeah. And technology is too much technology, and pretty soon you're gonna have a robot replace me, and, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, I had to debunk that myth to say that you are the center of attention. You're the center of attention. You still are. You know, you're giving attention to the students. The next was the increased visibility, plus increased scrutiny. And so I had to bring them in to break that myth for them. So I do at least an hour and a half training with them. I, I am hiring somebody to, so I don't have to do the training anymore. <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, I want to ask a bit about, uh, you mentioned that each students come here and they say anything they uh, don't understand about the knowledge and you guys can provide the lecture, come to them uh, here. So I want to know about the process. Do they need to make any appointments uh, with the lecturer or uh, you provide the lecturer, are uh, teaching them in the class or all the lecturers of that subject? Right, for and so, so for example, the geography department is its own subject and the, the professors will tell the um, chair that they need to teach Geography 102 or Geography 103. And then that the chair says, okay, do you want a classroom at the Highland campus? It's like, yes, okay, I'll get you a classroom. Now, before that, um, after that, what I found out is I have been working with the professors, and now it's up to the professor to tell the chair that they want to teach in the accelerator. Yeah. So I don't put them in. It's them requesting to be put into the, the classes. Yeah, but it, I mean, like, the students want to have the tutoring one-on-one? -on -one oh, yeah. So, yeah. It, it, so, so like either how, they, how could, the uh, they check in and go straight to the back. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's completely open. Yeah. Easy walk in. Everything walk in. If you need help with registration, you walk in. I got staff to sit and help you with registration. You need help with scholarships, they'll you just walk in and we help. You can make an appointment if you want to, but we help. Yeah. Um the sound installation is so good. What do you do with the sound installation? Because the ceiling is pretty high. Well the the nice thing is is the ideal is most faculty, the lecturing aspect is not so it's yeah. more conversation. And right now, to be honest with you, Listen, it's, it's quiet, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, but some people don't like the quiet. We, we want the noise. We like the energy. No, no, I mean, what material that you use to oh, isolate the sound? So those are supposed to be sound clouds. Oh, that one? Yes, those things that bounce. The diamond? Yes, it's supposed I to see. catch the sound and hold it. Oh, yes. it. So it's a mix of talking to faculty and saying, hey, when you do lecture, the, the chairs can come up. So just to have a conversation level, but those big things are supposed to catch the sound. I see. Yeah. Subscribe ke bern.id dan jangan lupa untuk mengunduh Pranala app. Untuk video terbaru, kamu bisa klik video di kanan atas. Dan untuk video rekomendasi, bisa klik video di kanan bawah. Terima kasih.